now. While waiting to speak to the media on Saturday night, LeBron James was a very, very busy man. He was picking up laundry bags of his teammates and brought them into the locker room to an attendant, something he was not very happy about. Hopefully, I only have to say something once. Can't leave the locker room like that. Max? Yep. Is this a big deal? It is a big deal. This is a big deal. And LeBron James picking up laundry bags, Stephen A. Smith, is a big deal. That is leadership. Let me tell you something that Buck Showalter once told me. Before he signs a guy, before they, they're actually going to bring a guy into the organization, a player, he finds out from the franchise that player is coming from, from the parking attendant, what's this guy like? From the guy who sweeps up, what's this guy like? Not just from teammates and coaches and, and managers and GMs. Smart. He finds out what the person is like around the people who that person doesn't stand to gain from. Just what kind of person is he? And this is the kind of person LeBron James is. The biggest star on planet Earth. I, I think I can say that without exaggeration. He's the biggest, he's the biggest celebrity there is um, who's not a head of state, maybe. This is LeBron James going around picking up laundry bags because he's considerate, not just because of respect for one's work in, workplace, work environment, but he's, he's considerate of the people around him, the people who would otherwise have to do it. And when the biggest star on earth is cleaning up after scrubs, because next to him everyone's a scrub, boy, those other guys get her, better get in line. And this goes right in line to me, Stephen A., with the guy LeBron's always been. Someone with LeBron James's level of talent can easily be isolated by it. We've seen that happen to plenty of superstars, but that's not how he uses his gifts. LeBron has and always has used his gifts to elevate everyone, to lift them up and take them along on the ride. And in this instance, I think we see another example. You're right about the fact that it's a big deal. You're wrong as, uh, as to why it is. It's not a big deal because just because LeBron James, the greatest, the, the greatest basketball player in the world, the biggest iconic sports superstar there is, decided to clean up. It speaks to a culture you want to make sure you knock down before it ever gains any momentum. Take, keep, take into account the fact that the average league salary in the National Basketball Association is in excess of $5 million annually. What scrubs average in the NBA, the people working for these teams will never make in a lifetime. As a result, because you can't live vicariously through these individuals in most instances, you're going to pass judgment as to who they are, what they are, whatever the case may be. And you're going to usually assume the worst because envy and jealousy permeates our society and beyond. It's no different anywhere. You can't be an individual that sits up there, your drawers, your socks, and all of this other stuff. You have no problem leaving stuff around. You have no regard for locker room attendants and others because it speaks to a level of privilege you believe you have, and you're thereby minimizing and diminishing other human beings. And anytime you're that way, it is bad in and of itself. But it particularly resonates with somebody like LeBron James, myself, and others. When you're African-American, when it's widely perceived that you are individuals that are very, very fortunate and blessed to be in the position that you're in, because a lot more often than not, we hear about the rag to riches stories when it comes to these athletes on professional levels. It's just a fact that those stories permeate the news wires, the airwaves, and beyond every day. LeBron James is cognizant of that. I'm cognizant of that. It's something that we're mindful of. Obviously, there are other athletes, not just Afri African Americans in that locker room, and I'm sure there's probably others that left their stuff around. But I'm saying when you look at a sport like that, you have to be cognizant because sometimes those locker room attendants are one of your own, and they're a bit older, and the respect that you need to show them mm -hmm. and the appreciation that you need to give them is incredibly important because they never got it anywhere else in their life. In this case, by the way, it also dovetails very nicely with, talk about changing the culture, a winning culture in a franchise. Get rid of that entitlement. Oh, you know, yep. you won the title, you're something, you can leave your drawers around. No, no, you can't. You're not, you know, it's a new season. It's a, so, so it doesn't always work like that, mm -hmm. that the right thing to do is also the right thing to do for winning, although we wish it did. 
But in this case, I think it absolutely dovetails uh, yeah. perfectly. Yeah. Know, know where your blessings come from. Of course. And appreciate that. I'm so with you guys. Makes me respect him even more that he can be the white collar and the blue collar. It's a miracle problem to have in my mind. And uh, uh, I'm so proud because uh, every time Dak uh, takes a, a snap, I see our future uh, getting stronger. Uh, I see the encouragement that his uh, uh, future brings to this team. I see what he's doing right now, his presence on that particular series or that particular down. Uh, all of that is there, and then I look over there, and in my mind, uh, someone that is very capable of winning it all. So normally we say if you have two quarterbacks, you have none, but of course this instance is very different, Max, and in yep. Jerry's world as well. Do you agree with him that this is a miracle problem to have? First, let me say, because we're on the subject of the Cowboys, mm -hmm. I said a couple segments ago that T.O. went from the Cowboys to the Eagles and went to the Super Bowl. Obviously, he was on the Eagles first and then, yep. and then the Cowboys. Second, of course, it's a great problem to have. Of course, it's a miracle problem to have. Most teams don't have a single, oh, not most, many teams are looking for a single good quarterback. And the Cowboys have two, a veteran and a rookie. That's a great problem to have. But let me translate what Jerry Jones is really saying here, Stephen A. Smith. He's saying, Max Kellerman was right. Right? Do you remember what I've been saying this whole time? Romo's job, because oh, Jerry Jones kept saying it's Romo's job, it's Romo's job. Said, yeah, it should be Romo's job, unless... Dak Prescott still only has one loss. The Cowboys are still sitting on one loss when Romo's ready to play. Then the history of the NFL has been, it doesn't matter if you're Kurt Warner, who gets, you, you, you can lose your job to injury. You can win it by injury, and you can lose it by injury. Mark Bulger's the hot hand. Even if he's not as good as Kurt Warner on his best day, it's Bulger's team. Warner gets traded, ultimately, or has to leave St. Louis, ultimately. That's the way it works. And what I really see Jerry Jones doing here is softening his position. His position was, when Romo's healthy, it's his job. Oh, but look, we still only have one loss. Well, maybe it's still Dak's job. We have to wait and see. That's what I see Jerry Jones saying here, Stephen A. Smith. It doesn't matter to me what Jerry Jones is saying. Uh, I find him laughable because I find him laughable. And the reason why I find him laughable is because when I think about Jerry Jones, I think about a 73-year-old man that is three years removed from acknowledging that the clock is ticking on his life and that he's desperate to win and win now. And then he follows that up by talking about the future and how bright it is. Well, what has happened? What has he morphed from Mork and Mindy, that show back from decades ago when Robin Williams, the late great Robin Williams, the comedian, God rest his soul, used to sit up there and used to get younger as opposed to older? Who is that now? Jerry Jones? No, last time I checked, he's still getting older and older. And the Dallas Cowboys uh, would need to understand that the clock is ticking. Do I think they're getting closer? Yes. I can't deny the fact that they're formidable. When you're led by two rookies who are playing outstanding football and you've got an elite offensive line, the best in football, there is no question that there's a tremendous upside and this team should be a contender for years and years to come. But Jerry Jones is still there. And what he's essentially saying to you, Max, is that he's the guy that can mess everything up. When I think about Jerry Jones, the owner, the president, the general manager for the Dallas Cowboys, just looking at his record here, his stellar record, I mean, he's 234 and 203. He's made the playoffs 13 times in 28 years. This is the Jerry Jones that we're talking about here. With a 14 and 10 record, who hasn't won a playoff, you know, hasn't, he's won two playoff games in 20 years, in 20 years. So when he sits up there, and talks about the future being so bright, acting like he's got time. Instead of appreciating the urgency of the moment, understanding that Dak Prescott is balling in such a fashion that it is a chemistry you may not want to disrupt. And somehow, some way, just days removed from sitting there and saying that Tony Romo is getting healthy and Tony Romo, when he can play, it's his job and that's it, case closed, to now talking about it's a miracle situation for him or anybody else to be in, it just shows me what the problem with the Dallas Cowboys is. They need an owner, a president, and a GM who knows how to be that and not try to be the coach. And that's not the case with Jerry Jones. Well, Jerry that Jones. That's where your problem lies. Jerry Jones, I think, learned recently that he couldn't exploit his wealth in a league with a hard cap. 
He couldn't exploit loopholes in the rules as he did with the Deion Sanders signing decades ago at this point when he helps lead the charge for a salary cap and then gets so around he just, it. He's with, just realizing that? And then, gets, realizing a, and then gets around it with, uh, with the bonus structure and the way that, that prorates the bonus. And that just happened? And that just happened? Yeah. Yep. Eventually what happened was, and we've seen it in the last several years, is he's now trying to cash in, it looks a little bit to me, on his wisdom, on the fact that he's been around the game and he, found, and he finally realized a couple of years ago that he ain't good enough as a GM. He needs help, and he ceded control largely, or, or a big chunk of it, to Stephen Jones, who's made much sounder football decisions over the last several years than Jerry Jones had in the previous years. And I think now the Cowboys are reaping those rewards. As it particularly, I'm not talking about his marketing brilliance, his business acumen, because that's not to be questioned. But strictly as it pertains to football, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Did you mention wisdom and Jerry Jones in the same sentence? Did you, did you just do that? Yes, but sometimes the wisdom is knowing, <laughs> Stephen A., sometimes the wisdom is knowing what you don't know. Oh, my and he goodness. finally figured I, I, out that really? he's not he a fig- good enough GM he, to do it by he's himself. He's figured out what he doesn't know, huh? Yep. Jerry Jones, you willing to put your money on that? That Jerry nope. Jones has figured out what he doesn't I'm not know. I'm putting my money on it. Really? Uh, I'm not exactly. Putting my money on it. So you just finally, talking. But you I, just talking. But I finally, That's all it no, is. No, no, no. Jerry but Jones and wisdom. See, I finally see some signs of maturity from the from the septuagenarian. Starting with okay. Stephen Jones being allowed essentially to assert himself sorry, and saying what, things what like, was that, "What was that? What was that septuagenarian? Is that no. the word you use?" Yeah, seventy-year-old. Okay, I just, Seven, I just, I just, just want to make sure. I just, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. Another word I haven't heard of first thing. I'm jealous of your vocabulary. No, I got that. Just want to make sure. Go okay, okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I just want to make sure. The point is, remember when he wanted Johnny Manziel? And by the way, you don't even have to know that. Everyone just knows knowing Jerry Jones. Johnny Manziel's available. You and I available. both know. He had to it be It was drooling. the alcohol. It was rumors of other issues why Jerry Jones was dissuaded. No, it's because Stephen Jones put it his body in football. front of it and drafted an no. offensive lineman who's worked out a little good. And I'm telling you, you it wouldn't have happened if Johnny Manziel was coming out of Texas A&M clean. Jerry Jones would have overruled his son. Steven, That's what I'm Steven saying. Steven Jones has been running the show much, much more in recent years than he ever had, and maybe more than Jerry. And it's paying dividends for them now. Really? It's yep. paying dividends? Yeah. Now? Oh, yeah. now? Oh, okay, good. Not, not the last 20 years. Okay, I just want to make sure. Well, you know what I'm saying? Well, one, the, one good season in the last decade. The Steven, oh, he's the running Steven the show. Jones he's running increasing control oh, is not that old. It. It's over the last several years. That's how long okay. it takes to put a team together. And okay. apparently they've been put together. Like I said, you're very understanding. With you, no one get fired. I mean, everybody have a job in the perpetuity because, after all, it takes time. It takes time. Mm. Everything takes time. Coordinators, coaches, players, everything takes time in a world of Max Kellerman. Yeah. Everybody will have a job. Stephen A. Smith, everybody no will have one a job. will be I'll employed. You, you fire everybody. You're right. You're right. I damn sure would. He runs I damn a sure chip. would. <laughs> I ain't be first to tell you. All right.